know that you can't make fried food taste better than it already does, right? Wrong. So today we're making curry katsu. If you don't know what this is, this is basically two of my most favorite foods of all time, combining Japanese curry and katsu. What more do you want? But more specifically, it uses one of my favorite ingredients of all time. Are there any guesses? There, there should be some, right? It goes a little bit like which is why I'm excited to announce today's sponsor and my favorite brand that produces it, Achinamoto. You've seen me use it all the time. A lot of you guys have started using it and you love it and you've noticed that it is perfectly safe to eat. Nobody really knows where this whole myth came from that, oh, well, if I can't pronounce it, I'm not gonna eat it. Really? There's tons of plants and foods that you can't pronounce. There've been numerous scientific studies around it that have all proven that it's safe to eat. All it is is an isolated amino acid of glutamate that's mixed with sodium. That's it. Chances are you probably eat glutamate every single day because it's naturally occurring in so many foods that we eat, both meat and plants. At the end of the day, this is a powerful ingredient that you can add to your arsenal and add to foods when it makes sense. So if you wanna learn more, visit the link in the description, go to nomsg.com. So anyway, curry katsu. This is exactly what I described it as. It is pork katsu served over rice with a nice Japanese curry. Now, traditionally, you'll see, oh, potatoes and peas and carrots, and oh my God, look at that curry, it's like a little stew. If you wanna add that, that's up to you. But at the end of the day, it is about that curry sauce, and we're gonna make the most splendid, velvety, beautiful sauce to go with the crispiest pork katsu of your life. With all that being said, let's make this, shall we? Human beings love to overcomplicate things, so let's simplify this process. This consists of four components, the katsu, the curry, obviously sweaty, perfectly cooked rice, and optional yukon curry pickled cabbage. Now, while that's optional, we're gonna begin with the pickle. Get yourself half a head of red cabbage, slice it as thinly as you can. Now, if you want those slices paper thin and ultra consistent, then you can totally use a mandolin. Just pray to the mandolin gods that your hands survive. And by that, I mean, be careful because this is easily the most ruthless and dangerous kitchen utensil in the entire universe. Place it into a large container, then snag yourself a medium sized sauce pot and add two cups or 480 milliliters of rice vinegar, one cup or 240 milliliters of water, two tablespoons or 30 grams of granulated sugar, and one tablespoon or 14 grams of salt. Set that over medium high, and as soon as that brother comes to a boil, cut the heat and stir in one tablespoon or eight grams of Yukari Shiso rice seasoning. Then immediately pour your hot pickle liquid over your cabbage threads. And you're going to use all of that. Now to ensure that it stays submerged, add a sandwich bag filled with water, closed and on top. Then just let that sit at room temp until it completely cools down and you now have Yukari pickled cabbage. Remove the weight and keep it in your fridge. All right, let's dive right into the main event the curry. First, in a large sauce pot, add a quarter cup or 56 grams of unsalted butter, set over medium heat, then once melted and bubbling. Add in three sweet onions that have been julienned. Cook those stirring often, adjusting your heat back and forth from medium to low, medium to low, to avoid it burning for 30 to 45 minutes. Now, you may have moments where the pan is a tad too dry and it's kind of starting to burn, so feel free to add a small splash of water when that happens to deglaze the bottom. Now, while those are cooking, bring one quart of good chicken stock to a boil and add a quarter cup or 20 grams of dried and sliced shiitake mushrooms. After about two minutes, your shrooms should be moist. Remove the mushrooms and place to the side. Now once your onion is beautifully deep caramelized, they're ready. Get an oddly large green apple, peel that bad boy and grate it. Then add that to your caramelized onion along with one tablespoon or 15 grams of tomato paste. Stir that together, add your rehydrated mushrooms that you forgot then let that saute for three to five minutes or until the apple is softened. Then remove all of that and place it in a bowl to the side. Now this is where people would just add a pre-made Japanese curry mix, right? Where the hell do you think you are, buddy? We're making our own. Add in a half cup or 112 grams of unsalted butter, set over medium heat, then once melted and bubbling, whisk in half a cup or 75 grams of all-purpose flour, cook that while constantly whisking for about 30 seconds, then add one tablespoon or 12 grams of garam masala, a quarter cup or 30 grams of S&B curry powder, one and a half teaspoons or seven grams of... Whisk that together and let that toast for about one minute, stirring occasionally, then add back all of your onion mixture, then add one tablespoon or 14 grams of dark soy sauce, two tablespoons or 25 grams of Worcestershire sauce, sauce, Worcestershire rooster sauce. You know what? I'm sick of it. Rename this shit. One tablespoon or 15 grams of honey, then whisk in that one quart of shiitake mushroom fortified chicken stock. Let that heat, stirring often until thickened, and let that simmer for two minutes. Adjust the salt levels to taste, then pop that bad boy in a blender and blend on high speed until extraordinarily smooth. And when I say smooth, I mean like 
velvet. Please just wait the extra 30 seconds. Once that's the correct consistency, while constantly blending, you're gonna add in three and a half tablespoons or 50 grams of cold butter, one tablespoon at a time, until all of it's added and emulsified. That should make your sauce beautifully glossy and smooth. Then all you gotta do is pass it through a fine mesh strainer or chinois into a new pot and simply keep it warm. I mean, look at this thing. That is one of the most luxurious and delicious Japanese curries that will ever touch your lips if you did it right, which you did, right? Papa watches with great now, I've touched on rice many, many times. I'll make this quick. Wash your rice. You're not allowed to make this recipe if you do not wash it. Plain and simple. Fine mesh strainer in a bowl, fill with water, agitate, discard water, and repeat one more time. Pop that in the greatest rice cooker on earth. Equal parts water. This is a short grain tamaki gold rice, by the way. Close the lid, press the on button, and you have perfect rice. It's that easy, no more rice porridge, please. Okay, it's katsu time. Now you need four boneless pork chops. Sure, you can use the kind of loin chops that come from a center cut pork loin roast, but I actually prefer to get the nice fatty rib chops like these and simply cut them off the bone. See, the problem is everyone likes to trim the fat off. What, do you not want any of the juicy, juicy squirt squirt? First, once you've got your deboned pork, score the fat cap nicely all the way down so your meat doesn't curl while it's cooking. Then optionally on the exposed meat portion, you can very lightly score it with a sharp knife in a crosshatch pattern, no more than an eighth of an inch deep on both sides. Then using a meat mallet, or in this case, a little pot, I'll order it later, it's fine. Anyway, you're gonna beat them brothers down until they're about half an inch thick. Then season them generously with salt and just a tiny little bit of <laughs> Then place them in the fridge covered to cure for at least 30 minutes or up to overnight. Now, once you're ready to fry, the breading station is one of the easiest in the game. You need one bowl filled with half a cup or 75 grams of all-purpose flour, another bowl filled with two eggs and a splash of water, beaten until homogenous, and one bowl with two cups or 240 grams of panko breadcrumbs. Then all you gotta do is take each chop one at a time, give them a nice toss in the flour, coat every little crevice, shake off the excess, then dip and coat every single angle in egg wash, let that drain slightly, and finally press into the panko breadcrumbs, ensuring every square inch is coated with panko. We know how I feel about uncoated portions of meat. It's a no good. Now just repeat that with all of your chops, then fill a large heavy bottom pot with about two and a half inches worth of vegetable oil, heat it to 340 Fahrenheit, and fry your pork chops one to two at a time, depending on the size of your pot. Look, these were so thick that it was kind of difficult to fit more than one, so that's totally fine. And fry for four to six minutes or until you pull out something so beautifully golden brown and crisp that the human brain automatically knows that it's going to be bohessing. Then just repeat with all of the katsu. Now we assemble. Get yourself a nice bowl, add a nice generous portion of rice, leaving a little pocket on the edge for your curry. Then in that pocket, ladle in as much or as little curry as you desire. This is also where you might add some steamed veg if you wish for that to be in your curry. Now reminder, do not slice your katsu until you're ready to serve. So now we are going to slice it. And on top of that, you should listen to this. Oh, good lord. Now add that to your bowl, kind of just barely dipping its toesies in the curry. Then that yukari pickled cabbage, nice little heap of it, a generous sprinkling of furikake of choice, and finally some very thinly sliced green onion. I sliced my green onion on a steep thin bias to get the shape, and there she is. A beautiful bowl of curry katsu. Could not be more lovely. Just looking at this, I feel like a proud father watching my bowl of curry katsu graduate college. I'm shedding a tear, and wait a minute, now I'm hungry? It's time to eat. Wow, take a look at this. Good lord! That's something special right there. Oh my god. This one has been soaking in sauce and I bet you it's still crunchy. Bonjour. Where is everybody? I'm not here anymore. Mama, Vikram, Kendrick. Weirdly enough, I don't feel alone. That was an ethereal experience. I think that I met what looked to be some form of a deity. Let's talk about how this literally just blew my pants clear off of my body. <laughs> The curry sauce in this is utterly ridiculous and it wouldn't be made possible without all the perfect spices, the harmony of cooking it gently, perfectly, beautifully, caramelizing those onions perfectly, but more specifically that MSG, bringing it home. This is ridiculous. I mean, the crunch, you heard it. It's delectable, it's rich, and yet cleansing at the same time. The chew of the rice brings it all together. This is easily one of the greatest dishes of all time and this is one of the best ways that you will ever make it. Take it or leave it, pal. You wanna know what else is full of hot ladlings of sauce and crunchy dreams? B-roll. Alright guys, and that is it. So we made our curry katsu. It came out sp
I wanna kiss that. And you wanna know what else I wanna kiss? I wanna kiss Ajinomoto for sponsoring today's video. Remember, if you want to learn more about MSG, go to knowmsg.com. Aside from this just being a sponsorship, this is something that's important to me. Obviously, I don't use MSG in every single dish I make, because you know some things are about technique and some things are about just leveraging a certain flavor that you want, right? It's about using it as a spice, it's a tool, and it's perfectly safe to eat. And I wanna help dispel this sort of confusion and mystery around it, okay? So click the link in the description and educate yourself. Now, back to this curry katsu. I, I really don't know what to say other than like the sauce, perfect, the pork, perfect, the rice, perfect. Everything was delectable. Oh, of course, the pickles too, right? You could use any pickle you want. Bread and butter pickles on there? Pfft, dang. Every single element of this dish needs to be focused on and given your full attention. I don't want the pork katsu and the curry sauce to be perfect, but then the rice be mushy, okay? Remember the rule. Wash your gat dang rice. Now, with all that being said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Beep, beep.